Hello and welcome to another episode of Uncaged, the official podcast of BA Tiger Sports. This podcast is made possible by our wonderful One Club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Sinsent St. John Broken Arrow, Tulsa Bone and Joint, and the Arrow Group. I'm your host, Greg Spencer, alongside Executive Director of Athletics, Darren Melton. Darren, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me on, Greg. Why don't you tell us who we have on the show for this week? We have got our head wrestling coach, Rod Jones, here with us, and our 106 weight wrestler, Christian Forbes, on the show. Excited to hear from both these guys today. Good to have you guys on the show today. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Thanks for having us on. So the wrestling world is heating up right now. You guys are coming up on state. Talk to us about a little bit what you got going on right now. Yeah, it's state tournament time in Oklahoma. Best time of the year for for wrestling in the state of Oklahoma. We just finished up our uh, 6A East Regional Tournament at Stillwater High School. Um, Qualified 10 wrestlers for the state tournament, including uh, Christian Forbes. just looking forward to uh, a good week of preparation and excited about the weekend ahead and, and, and to get to wrestle for a state championship. Obviously, a lot of people in Broken Arrow know a lot about wrestling, but talk, tell us a little bit about the difference. One of the differences with, with wrestling in high school is you have two state tournaments. Tell us a little bit about dual state, which you've already had, correct, and then what you got coming up this week, kind of what the differences are. There's two formats that, that you compete in wrestling. You compete in the dual format, and then you also compete in the tournament format. Is, And the tournament format is where you claim individual state championships. And each wrestler, I mean, that's that's their dream. That's their goal is to be an individual state champion, and, and you achieve that uh, at the tournament state championship. Now, dual state championship is uh, all 14 weight classes against – of an opponent, the other teams, all 14. So your 14 man lineup against somebody else's 14 man lineup. And just to see the outcome and the format is different. Um, and it's also, uh, it's, it's exciting for the fans. It's an exciting setup the way, and, and most fans will tell you that they enjoy the dual, uh, meet setup, uh, sometimes opposed to the, uh, tournament setup because it, it's, 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 it's about an hour and a half, two hour game format match setup where the outcome is pretty quick afterwards. Whereas in the tournament, sometimes, or most of the time, it's a two-day tournament and it lasts over two days. And then at the end of that, you crown an individual state champion and then you take a combination of uh, matches won, bonus points, placement points, and things like that to determine who the tournament state champion is. So it, it is kind of hard to understand, but in Oklahoma, uh, most people are pretty familiar with wrestling and understand how it works. Coach, we're just coming off the regional uh, at Stillwater and I'm there as an observer, but you know, one thing I noticed, number one, so many good wrestlers in that regional, so many good teams in that regional. The bracket Christian was in, if I understand correctly, three top, three guys in the top 10 in America with the, with the 106 weight. Talk about that a little bit. Um, loved watching our guys compete. Uh, those guys, uh, were ready. They went. They wrestled hard, um, well coached. Just talk about talk about that regional a little bit. Your preparation for the regional, um, and and just the competition, just what we saw down there. Yeah, competition right now in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, I mean, always it's always competitive and it's always good. But right now, there's it's a it's a different level as far as uh, the amount of kids. That are that are really high quality, and then the amount of teams that are really high quality. I mean, right now, uh, going into this weekend, there's probably five teams that five or six, you know, high schools that truly believe that if they can put together a good tournament in Oklahoma City, then they have a chance to be, uh, you know, team state champions at the end of the year. So yeah, competitions at an all-time high. Six A wrestling in the state of Oklahoma is always extremely competitive, and this year is no different, and the the competition. I mean, watching these guys and then looking at their faces afterwards is pretty incredible. The black, the amount of black eyes and scratches and scrapes and and bruises and bumps and and I mean, it's it's a two days of intense competition, and and right now in the state of Oklahoma, competition is really really good. Very tough, very tough on on Friday and Saturday. I, I did notice so many good matches that just went down to the wire, and. 
it was no different uh, in in the uh, 106 bracket with with Christian. Christian, talk to us a little bit about uh, about your tournament. Uh, you you wrestled so well. Talk to us a little bit about take us inside um, the preparation for for the time of year you're, you've been waiting for uh, regionals, which ultimately leading to the state tournament. Uh, where, where's your head at right now? What 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 are you doing right now to get ready for the most important time of the year for for an athlete? Well, I feel pretty good right now, and um, and the biggest thing for me is just trusting my training and my coaching and my coaches and everything like that. And you know, I think the biggest thing right now is making sure that I don't try and change up, you know, big things. I need the things I need to work on, the little things, just little positions, not changing up how I wrestle overall, and just kind of fixing those little things that are going to win those close matches, like the one I had in the finals. And if you'd have been at Stillwater on on Saturday, I think that what Christian just said, you would have seen that in action. Um, this guy's a competitor, um, stuck stuck with uh, his technique and, and what he's been coached to do throughout. Um, going to the University of Oklahoma to further his career uh, as, as a wrestler, which is so exciting, but I know he wants to uh, – he's got some unfinished business in the 6A, 106-pound bracket. Uh, at state and in Oklahoma City at the State Fair Arena this weekend. So you said you feel good physically, Christian, yeah. which is so it's it's big with an athlete this time of year is that mentally and physically, and it may, probably maybe more mentally that you're ready yeah. to go. Talk about that for just a second. What do you do? What do you do to prepare mentally? What do you do to prepare physically to get ready for for this time of year? Yeah, um, mental, mentally and physically, you know, you want to make sure you're at the top of your game. Um, I think mentally is the biggest part, and I think what goes into that is, especially before matches, like just a couple minutes before, 10 minutes before, I think mentally talking to myself, giving myself positive thoughts, confidence, building myself up, you know, I think that's the biggest thing because you could be phys- in physically good shape, but if you're not mentally tough enough to win those close matches, and it's not it's not going to make a difference. Your physical shape is not going to make a difference. So, you know, mental – Mental, your mentality is the biggest thing in wrestling. So I think, you know, just positive self-talk, confidence, you know, telling yourself that you put in the training, you put in the work to, to get it done. Well, I, I can certainly tell. Uh, I've watched you wrestle now for the last three years, and, and uh, you're, you're a technician, um, and you're very confident. And I love, I love that combination going out on the mat, um, and you're, you're going to go – be ready going into a, a very tough bracket this weekend uh, at, at the state tournament. Coach Jones, talk just a second about as the head coach. This this stuff intrigues me. Um, just getting a team ready to go, getting getting uh, wrestlers that are uh, that, that do it at a high level ready to go. From your end of it, for being the head coach, the CEO, what's your mindset right now? Just make sure that the guys are rested. Um, Physically, I mean, the work, training from the day after the state tournament last year to this point right here has been focused on getting back to this place, to, to this point. And, and Christian's a leader in the room, uh, works, you know, you know, sets the, the pace and the standard of how you're supposed to work and go about becoming a champion. And um, just working on making sure that, that we feel good physically because – that the regional tournament was a tough tournament. It was was a, was a grind, um, and the weekend before that was the dual state tournament, which you know we put a lot into that. So we get to this week right here, and we we've, we've got to re- really be cautious in how much work the workload that we put on them this week, because really the work has been done, uh, the training has been done physically. They are ready to go. They've been ready to go for for a few weeks now. Um, we just got to make sure that they're rested up. We don't we, we don't get um, too excited and, and and try to work them too hard or try to push them too hard because the last thing that we want to happen is them to be a little bit physically fatigued on, on you know, at the first round of, of the state tournament. And everything we do, everything you do as a wrestler is, is to be the champion. And in our room. Um, strong tradition 20 state championships uh we put our the names of our state champions on the wall and they're and they stay on the wall forever and we point at that wall and we talk about that wall and and 
at the end of the day, um, losses, records, everything going into the state tournament doesn't mean anything. What matters is what happens at that on that weekend every year in February. And Christian understands that, and the rest of the guys understand that, that you know everything to this point has been preparation and practice, and we have got to be – to be a state champion in Oklahoma, you have to be your best on this in this weekend at the state tournament. And we've been talking to Christian and we've talked to these guys all the time is you want to put your name on that wall. And this is what it's all about. And physically they're ready to go. Mentally, they can they can be in a situation where maybe they're they're not in the best position to go. And you can see that. But it's our goal as coaches and as a staff to make sure that that their minds are ready to go and put their and, and get their name on that wall for forever. Coach, you talked about Christian setting the pace and in, in practices and being a leader. Tell us a little bit more about him as a wrestler. What makes him good at what he does? And, and uh, talk to us about a chance of him getting his name on that wall as well. Well, Christian knows what it takes to be successful at the highest levels in, in wrestling. Um, his dad is is a former Broken Arrow wrestler, so he's kind of a legacy guy that understands the traditions and the expectations of the program. But he's a 365 days out of the year guy. He he's not someone that you know once the season's over with, you're not going to see you know you don't see him again until the following fall. I mean, he's a guy that's probably going to be in the room two three days after the season ends this year, and he's going to be putting in you know the time that's required to be successful. He has success not only you know in folk style wrestling, which is what we compete in at the at the high school level, and it's what colleges compete at at the collegiate level, but there's also the international style, the freestyle, and the Greco-Roman, that is is, is kind of two different sports if you want to think of it. But it's all wrestling, and Christian's somebody that's poured his heart and soul into uh, that aspect of of wrestling and that aspect of training, meaning that that he'll. He'll get start getting ready for, you know, spring competitions, for summer competitions. Uh, he's a multiple uh, Fargo All-American, which is the freestyle competition that happens every year at the end of the summer in Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, junior National All-American. Uh, he placed at the Ohio Ironman this year, which is arguably one of the toughest folk style national tournaments uh, of the year in, in the United States. But he's somebody that understands the time on task, the, the level of work and the level of dedication to get to the point that he is, you know, obviously signed to go to the University of Oklahoma, which is a big time division one uh, wrestling school. And you're not going to get to that point by showing up in October and then leaving at the end of the year in February. It's something that you're going to have to commit yourself to uh, a year around process and then and for him that's nothing that's just the way he's that's just the way he's lived for a long time that's been his lifestyle and understand the, the amount of work and, and, and the type of work that you have to put into it is extremely important and we talk about that all the time if, if we can teach them how to work you know they'll be able to figure out how to get themselves you know to a certain level uh you know you, you teach anybody how to work they're going to be able to teach themselves how to do something and I think that's what he understands, you know, not just on a everyday basis, but a you know year round basis is the type of work that has to be put into it. Awesome, Christian. Why don't you talk a little, uh, talk to us a little bit about why you chose to go to OU? Yeah, um, so I was able to be recruited during the summer of 2020, around whenever COVID first started, and so I was able to talk to colleges on the phone, but not visit them, and so that was a little difficult. And so as my, as it went on. I kind of started looking at places closer to home because, you know, I didn't know how things were going to turn out. So I want to look at a place closer to home. On top of that, OU has a great coaching staff. You know, they have Olympians. They have national champs. They have a lot of amazing coaching staff and an RTC. And, um, and I have a lot of friends I've grown up with, been on national teams with, you know, my teammates, you know, Jared Hill, he's up there right now. You know, so I have a lot of people up there that I've grown up with that I've known. You know, I have a good relationship with the coaches. And, you know, I've always grown up an OU fan, OU football fan. So, you know, it's cool to go to a place that's, you know, two hours away. So I'll be on my own, but it's also close to home in case I need, I guess I need anything. And I think we have another former Oklahoma Sooner wrestler in the room. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I, I wrestled at the University of Oklahoma uh, and spent some time there on the coaching staff afterwards. So uh, anytime I can point these guys in that direction, I uh, feel very confident in, in, in the choice that they're making. Absolutely. Coach, I think one of the most rewarding things about being a coach is, is what these guys and, and, and girls take away from our sport into the next phase of their life. Talk about that just a second. I know it's obvious when you step in the room at BA, you feel, uh, you feel the greatness, the expectation. Um, talk a little bit about beyond that just a little bit. What, what do you hope that a, a broken arrow wrestler walks away with beyond, beyond the sport itself? Yeah, 100%. I mean, what, what, are we, what are we doing as coaches? What are we, you know, truly trying to do as, as teachers and mentors uh, for young people that are growing up and, and going through this, this stage or this phase of their life, which is a very important stage, in, you know, we believe in phase, uh, because after high school you get in, in, into that realm where you're getting pretty close to adulthood and, 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 and you know, becoming uh, – a man and your and your own man are responsible and, and accountable for everything uh, that happens uh, after high school. Um, wrestling is fabricated adversity, you know. And, and I guess you, can, you know, most sports or or, or uh, you know games or you know things, but wrestling is truly to do and to be involved in the sport. You've got to put yourself into a lot of uncomfortable, painful, um, challenging situations. And, you know, how do you handle those? How do you handle adversity? How do you handle tough situations? How do you, you know, are you, are you somebody that, that's going to be committed to it? Or are you, are you somebody that's going to look for a shortcut? Or are you somebody that's going to look for an easy way of doing something? If you're looking for shortcuts and if you're not committed and if you're looking for an easy way, then your, your chances and percentages of being successful at wrestling are not going to be very high. Um, you got aspects like you have to manage your weight. You have to be, you know, pretty disciplined in your diet. And asking teenagers to be disciplined in their diet is challenging. But to be successful and and, and to have a successful program full of successful wrestlers, they, they understand that level of commitment and that level of dedication that is required. I mean, so you you, you know, at some point, and, and and wrestling gets a bad rap because of uh, or, or misunderstood. Um, because of the weight management uh, challenges that these guys face, but they don't get to sometimes drink as much water as they w- would really like to, or probably get to eat as much a- as they would like to. And so you're talking about essential ingredients to sustain life, and here we are asking them to kind of uh, monitor that and then to come in the room and, and to put in a good hard two-hour practice uh, on top of that. Uh, I think it just builds a lot of character, a lot of character and a lot of resolve, and, and understanding that there's good days and there's bad days. And, you know, later on in life, these are things that we believe that they're going to be able to fall back on is, you know, things don't go, you know, the way you want them to go or if things are hard or if things are tough, then just your participation and, and growth through the sport of wrestling, I think, gives them a better um, ability to handle things that that come come along later in life. Uh, legendary coach Dan Gable makes the comment that after you wrestle, everything in life is easier. And and, and there's some truth to that. I mean, you know, even where I am in, in my life as an adult, as as a married man with two children, and and trying to be responsible and accountable. You know, there are tough times and, and, and tough situations, or, or you know, things that you got to kind of push through. And and just by being involved and in, and in, the sport of wrestling, I can, those challenges are not as difficult maybe just because uh, you, you grew up kind of every day putting yourself in a position to, to face challenges and adversity and to overcome and it makes things seem a little bit easier maybe later on in life. And, and ultimately, we were wanting these guys to grow up and be successful adults and, 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 and you know, continue uh, giving back to their community and, and all of those great things. And, and I think I believe that wrestling does and teaches these kids those skills and uh, instills in them these characteristics of dedication, determination, commitment, and and, and everything. Micro is wrestling is kind of a microcosm of life, and, and, and you know if you want to kind of 
you know, put it in that little category. And we have a lot of uh, guys that, that go on to be successful men after this program. And then they come back and it's good to see uh, all the success that they're having. And then, and then they give back to the program. So it, it's kind of like a uh, full circle. Christian, why don't you tell us a little bit about Coach Jones? What what makes him a great coach, and and what what are some of the aspects that you've enjoyed wrestling for him the last couple of years? Well, I've enjoyed every aspect, but um, but you know he's just a great coach. He he knows the pace the practice needs to be. You know whether it's you know beginning of the year before the, even the first tournament, he knows the kind of pace the practice needs to be. Or right now, when we're just fine tuning little things, he knows what kind of how long the practice needs to be, the pace the practice needs to be. You know, and he. He always talks to us before and after practice, you know, about he just kind of instills in us good mentality, uh, positive thoughts, you know, just giving it our best. And him, along with the, all the coaching staff, you know, do a great job. If, if we need help, he'll come up and help us. He'll give us feedback. You know, after a match, he'll talk to us. You know, he's just a really good coach that isn't distant. You know, he's not going to, after your match, he's not just going to walk away and just not talk to you. He's going to tell you what you need to work on. And he, then after that, he's going to work that with you the next week. Coach, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about who else do we need to look out for in state? And Christian, you kind of jump in, talk a little bit about your teammates as well, and let us know who do we need to look out for this week. Well, to, just to kind of go through uh, our qualifiers, you know, obviously Christian is at 106. Uh, somebody he could probably talk about, somebody that's his workout partner is Ethan Rodriguez at 113. Yeah. And Ethan has um, had his ups and downs this season. Uh, but he's he, he stayed he, he stuck with it and stayed with it and then he was 113 pound uh, champion this weekend at 120. Parker Whitcraft's a senior. He, he's experienced. He's been to the state tournament. He's a returning state placer. Uh, 126 is Caleb Collins. Caleb is a returning state qualifier, uh, newcomer, uh, sophomore at 132. Cadence Roop, who, who we're really excited about. Uh, 138 pounds, Andrew Lawless uh, has been in the program for a long time. Now he's finally getting his opportunity. Uh, he was third place at the regionals this weekend. Um, Jordan Colors uh, is at 152 pounds. Um, he's been in the finals at the state tournament two times, a lot like Christian's been in the finals of the state tournament two times, and definitely wanting to find a championship, not only with Christian, but with Jordan as well. Yeah. You, don't want to see anybody make the finals three times and then go home empty-handed. Uh, 182 pounds, Cooper Cook is a junior and uh, is starting to seem like he is catching fire at the right time. Uh, 192 is Henry Martin, a senior, and 220 is Eli Hines, uh, who's been very steady for us all year and has been ranked you know, close to the top at his weight class. All of these guys, I mean, I mean – and we, we talked about it yesterday before practices. The expectations is, is for all of them to come home with the medal. Yeah. And what color? That's up to them. What color that medal is. And then you start talking about 10 guys coming home with medals, 10 guys placed into the state tournament, and that gets you kind of right back to where Broken Arrow always seems to be is, is we're competing for a state championship as a team. But uh, watching Christian work in the room and, and watching all these guys – for the most part, they have a workout partner uh, that they work out with most of the time. We, we mix it up sometimes, and they change partners sometimes. But I, I think he's been a ben, beneficial, and I, th I think Ethan's been beneficial uh, for him as well. But uh, Ethan Rodriguez, 113, was a champion this weekend and put himself in a good place in the bracket, and he's been training with Christian all year. I think the thing is, like, uh, he's been saying, Coach's been saying peak at the right time, you know, at the end. And I think that's a big thing, too, because Ethan, you know, he had a rocky start. Caleb Collins had a rocky start with the season, you know, and Parker's off and on. So, you know, but now they're all picking up the right time. They're all wrestling good. So I think it's working out perfectly. You know, everyone's doing what they need to do at the right time. And at regionals, they all performed good, looked good. You know, and I think Jordan's looking good. He feels good at 52. And I think especially the seniors, you know, I think me and Jordan, you know, make it to the finals twice and not winning it. I think we're kind of – going in there with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder, wanting to win this thing. And, you know, Parker, it's his last go around at it, you know, and, and Cadence Rube, I'm really looking forward to seeing him even in his future years because he's, he works extremely hard. He, he, he listens and he's been looking amazing this year. 
So Christian, do you have a rival or a nemesis out there that, that's gotten in your way towards getting that state championship or somebody that you've kind of got, you know, pointed out that you're really looking forward to battling? Well, um, this year I've only had two losses in Oklahoma and I haven't really been back and forth with anyone. You know, the two kids I've lost to have only got to wrestle them once. So, you know, I haven't really got to, you know, see how that goes, but I'm looking forward to wrestling either one of them. You know, they're both on the other side of the bracket. So, you know, I don't know how that's going to play out, but. I'm looking forward to wrestling anyone that I beat or haven't beat. Coach, just to kind of reiterate what you guys have said, it just felt like I've watched this wrestle quite a bit this year. It just felt like on on Saturday that we're peaking. We're, our best wrestling is happening right now just to see the guys up and down the lineup. Um, I, I, was, I was impressed with how hard we wrestled. You could tell that they felt like we were supposed to be there. That there, there was no, there was no accident there. Um, I, talk about that for just a second. Going in, did you get that same feeling? Is that it's, it just felt that way to me? Yeah. It's funny um, that that was an observation uh, of yours, and not you know, and being Broken Arrow, and 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 being always a team that's competing for a state championship in Oklahoma. Um, not to say that, that that we have a lot of haters, but we probably just don't have a lot of people that love us. And the number of coaches uh, that reached out on their own to compliment our guys on on their performance and 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 not 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 so much on their wins and losses, but how they competed um, was a little bit odd after the regional tournament this weekend because. I we I talked to the guys yesterday about it. And I talked to the coaches about it. But you know, I, maybe three or four coaches, you know, you know, found the time to come up and 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 really brag on on the way the guys performed. And it's great to hear that, for, you know, f, you know, from your peers and, and people that you respect. Um, that's the way it's all set up for us. Um, and if you look at our schedule, and, and and you look at the teams that we compete against. Uh, for one is, is we open the season against, you know, the preseason favorite and probably the post, you know, the postseason favorite right now, Stillwater High School, who, you know, that was our first dual meet of the season. And then we, we go to Kansas and we, we compete against nationally ranked teams uh, there from Iowa and, and, and all over the region. Uh, very, very strong competition. We believe in competition. We're not scared to get beat. We're not scared to lose wrestling matches. Um, then we go to the hot, the Ohio tournament, which is like I mentioned earlier, is one of the toughest folk style wrestling tournaments there is out there. And you know we we take our we take our our, our beatings to a certain yeah. degree, and we and, and we take uh, some losses. Then we come back and, and we wrestle. You know the Bigsby's who are really tough twice this year. We wrestled the the uh, best team in 4A for the past 20 some odd years. Tuttle, who is still extremely strong. We wrestled Mustang, who who is an extremely strong program. So we feed them to the sharks, so to speak. And there's a reason for that is, yeah. is we don't want to get to the regional tournament and not be tested and not understand how hard you have to fight and how hard you have to wrestle to win a competitive wrestling match. And I feel like all of our guys have, have been put through the fire this year and they've been put through the fire for a reason is because you don't want to find out what your weaknesses are uh, on the second match of the regional tournament. You know, you wanted to have already addressed all of those things. And it's tough because you do take a lot of losses. We have guys, we have state qualifiers with losing records. Uh, we have, we have guys that have qualified for the state tournament with close to 500 records and, and, and they're way, they're, they're, they're a lot better than what their record says. And that's why yeah. we don't get too, caught up on all of that stuff. We've never had a, 17 years in broken air. We've never had a wrestler go undefeated and uh, we've had a lot of great wrestlers. And then if you look at our dual meet record, our, uh, I think we we took five or six losses as, as a team and I don't want to take losses. I'm, I'm not accepting losses, but at the same time, it, it's through those types of competitions that you truly, that you truly learn. Uh, you, yeah. you know, you win or you learn, right? You, it's not, you win or you lose, you win or you learn. True. And, uh, be nice if we could all just be undefeated and, and have everything 
together. Uh, but the reality is this group um, needed to, to go through those experiences and, and, and wrestled that competition to, to understand, you know, what it's going to take. And you want them to understand that a lot sooner than late, you know, sooner than later. Um, but it seems like, they're kind of getting the understanding and they're getting it at the right time. And uh, I think that's like also another great thing about, you know, the book and arrow in general is that we could have just taken it easy and just had an easy schedule, but we pretty much wrestled every single team that's in the run for a state championships, Mustang, Bigsby, Stillwater, Edmund North, Edmund North, every single team that's going to be competing for a state championship. We wrestled them. We went to Ohio. We went to, we pretty much had the toughest schedule out of anyone in Oklahoma you know, we could have easily just got an easy schedule and had some undefeated wrestlers and, you know, said all that stuff. And it looked at, had a good uh, you know, record, but, you know, he, they put us out there and that actually helped us prepare even better. And it, that's a big reason why we're peaking at this moment, because we had so many, so many trials and so many tough competitions leading up to this. Uh, before we wrap things up, Coach, you know, obviously a successful varsity program starts at, at a younger age as well. If anybody's sit, sitting at home right now, a parent, listening, wanting to get their kid involved in Broken Arrow Wrestling, what do they need to do? Well, the easiest thing anyone needs to, to do if they're interested in, in, in getting involved in wrestling is, is, is just reach out to me. I'm available. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not – I'll share my name, my number, and, and email uh, everywhere. Um, we have a, a, an established youth program, uh, the Broken Arrow Wrestling Club, which takes care of our, our, our youth-level wrestlers and had close to 110, 120 kids participating uh, this year in, in, in that program. And then um, our middle school program is obviously, we get those kids every day. They come, they come to the wrestling room every day. Um, at one point this year, I think there was close to 107th and 8th graders on our roster that are being exposed to wrestling every day. We have a great junior high coaching staff, uh, Chris Buckmaster, William Barlow, John Bullock, Shay Conley are, are with those guys every day uh, of the school year, which is, you know, we're, we're lucky that we have that opportunity. Um, then our high school staff, obviously, it's, I mentioned it earlier, it's a 365 days out of the year. And, 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 and I crack jokes sometimes about like, you know, there's no reason to be, done there's no reason to be tired and not ready to compete as if you know if you don't qualify for the state tournament then your season's over or, or that we're going to take a break because we're probably not going to take much of a break we'll probably turn around um next week early next week and we'll have a weightlifting program set up we'll have a freestyle program set up we'll have a uh, uh, a training program set up in a couple of days after the season's over and we'll start building for the for the following year um, but a high school coaching staff that, that includes uh, Biff Jones, Ray Rosso, Dustin Hines, and then uh, Ernie Jones has joined us this year, who is basically uh, an encyclopedia of, of wrestling knowledge over, uh, you know, four or five decades. And um, the, the opportunities that, that these guys have and, and the coaches that they're exposed to um, – we like to say that wrestling lives here in Broken Arrow, and we're very, very proud of, of the wrestling program. And we have a very strong uh, su support group or a community that loves wrestling and understands wrestling. And, and, and it's our, our job to, to keep it going and to keep it going at a high level. And, and we embrace that uh, expectation every day. And we, we go into the room every day understanding that, that we got to keep working, we got to keep better keep getting better and if anybody is interested in, in joining wrestling it, it's a pretty quick uh you know find my number give me a call reach out to me i can get them involved coach melton you got any final thoughts or questions well just looking forward to watching these guys uh this weekend at the state tournament and just was great listening to christian talk about his perspective on on the season and coach jones just talking about the mindset those are uh there's no doubt uh, to why these guys are very, very successful. And Coach Jones, remind us again what you guys have coming up this week and also plug your social media accounts. You guys do a great job. In addition to the uh, BA Tiger Sports accounts, the wrestling accounts do a really good job keeping fans up to date. Yeah, uh, this weekend, Friday and Saturday, will be the uh, the Oklahoma State Wrestling Championships. Uh, they take place at the Oklahoma City uh, Fairgrounds, Jim Norick Arena. Um, 
looking forward to that. It's 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 a great venue uh, to get to compete in. We look forward to that, uh, and ex we're excited. Uh, I think all of our guys are excited for the opportunity. Yeah, any 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 time, uh, and what you guys do for us, and and what uh you know Wes does with with Tiger, uh, you know social media and everything like that is incredible. Uh, I think it really separates Broken Arrow from a lot of other schools in, in the area. But uh, I think our Twitter or email or not Twitter and our Facebook and Instagram is all BAHS Wrestling. And uh, we just try to keep everybody, you know, up to date on what's going on in Broken Arrow Wrestling because it, there's something going on all the time. Absolutely. Well, we'd like to thank Coach Jones and Christian for joining us here on Uncaged, the official podcast of BA Tiger Sports. We will see you next time.